Those who know me know that I absolutely refuse to play serious characters. It's probably some character flaw with me, and I might sometimes be a that guy, but I really just can't resist. I just find way too much enjoyment out of making hilarious and insane characters. Because of this, imagine my delight when a really good friend of mine invited me to join in a DD campaign that she intended on being the DM in. Now, I hadn't had much of an opportunity to play as a player as opposed to a DM, so I happily agreed to join her campaign. I'd played with the her before, and knew that she was a fantastic player and DM, so I was quite excited. The only limitations that she gave me were that the campaign in question would heavily involve arcane magic, and that we'd all be affiliated with a magic school. Insert Harry Potter joke here, and I got to work. Now, my first question with everything was how I could possibly make this character memorable. I don't really know how it happened, but I must have looked through every single DD book in order to complete the character, and what I came out with was something truly unique. His name was Bram the Wizard. Notice that wizard is in quotation marks you'll soon understand why. We started off the campaign at 8th level. Most of Bram's levels were as a fighter, but he took a few rogue levels, just so that he could have a wide variety of skills and skill points that I love to have. Which is the same reason why I also made him a human. The game was also in 3.5 edition. I won't go too deep into Bram's rich backstory, which I always insist on giving all of my characters, but I'll give you the synopsis. Basically, Bram was born a bastard. His parents were both slaves who were considered to be of exceptionally good breeding stock, and so they made Bram. He escaped eventually and then spent his youth as a lot of things. A gladiator mostly, but also worked as a bouncer, gigolo, city guard etc. But what he wanted to be most of all was a wizard. As much as he liked fighting, the idea of magic was most alluring to him. He was fascinated by it, but could never learn much about it because he never bothered to learn to read. Bram was a rather interesting character. While he was an exceptional warrior, his real strengths came from his skill in bluff, which was ungodly high for a level 8, as well as his infantry. I'll get to those later. When our first session came about, all of the others were what was to be expected. The first character was played by one of my friends, and also the DM's boyfriend. He played a wizard, who was the most hilariously stereotypical Gandalf-like character you could imagine. He was basically your standard wizard, who had his hand in every aspect, and was kind of a jack of all trades. The next was a girl who I want to familiar with. She played a sorcerer who acted as our glass cannon. The character was nothing too remarkable, but she was certainly useful, and her player was really cool. Next was a bard, who got away with the fact that they were in a magic school, because bard's magic is technically arcane. The guy who played him was kind of like me, and used his character mostly just to have fun, and only be serious when they had to. The character was pretty well built, and was even rather effective in combat, both with their magic, sword and instrument. Then finally was a girl who played a necromancer. The necromancer was a powerful wizard, and was roleplayed to be quiet, observant, creepy and a bit sadistic at times. But the hilarious part is that the girl that played her was one of the most open, bubbly and friendly people I've ever met. I know that people just like to roleplay, but the fact that she was the one who played the necromancer was just hilarious to me. And then finally, there was me. Bram the wizard. I told the DM that I entered the college as an eldritch knight, and wanted to learn more of the finer points of magic. I had managed to bluff my way through the entrance exam and voila, I was in. At this point, the only person who knew that I hadn't an ounce of magical ability within me was the DM, who found the notion of my character so hilarious that she let me play him. Everyone else was convinced that I was an eldritch knight who simply preferred melee combat. Now the first thing that you might be wondering is how I kept up this ruse. Well, the answer to that my friends is rather simple. I had dumped a massive portion of my skill points into two specific skills. Sleight of hand, and bluff. Every time I would pretend to cast a spell, the DM would have me roll a bluff and a sleight of hand check, instead of check to actually cast a spell. I would use the sleight of hand check to pull out and use one of the many items or potions in my inventory. I would then use the bluff check to convince everyone that the stuff I was using was indeed magical, and not the items that they actually were. There was rarely any purpose to this, other than for role playing's sake. Our days at the magic school were spent in part performing relatively small tasks throughout the university, as well as learning a little bit. Bram might have been illiterate, but he wasn't stupid, 
and could make his way through most of his courses with a pretty decent grade. Still, no one at this point knew of the fact that I was both illiterate and possessed no magic talent. Well the players knew that I was illiterate, but that's mostly because I didn't bother to hide that from them. Bram was fully aware of the fact that he couldn't cast magic. But that didn't stop him from trying. Every day he would spend time stealthfully watching some of the masters teaching apprentices basic techniques of casting spells, and every night he would spend hours upon hours practicing them too. Trying desperately to get something to happen. But nothing ever did. As disappointed as Bram was by this, he didn't care too much. He was still in the largest magic university in the known world, and he was still learning more and more about the finer points and nature of magic, even if he couldn't perform it himself. Simply being around so much magic was like a dream come true to him. Things were pretty normal, that is until it became rather noticeable that some students were acting strange. Many seemed afraid and suspicious of each other. Our necromancer and bard really took the lead on investigating things around the school. Our bard able to persuade some of the students and faculty to tell him what was going on, and our necromancer mostly being able to scare the living fuck out of them. Both didn't yield all of the results that we wanted them to. All we got out of the students was that people are on edge because of some secret group of magic users who've managed to infiltrate the school. A day later, when we were all studying for an evocation exam in the library, an apprentice aged child stood up on a desk a few tables down from us. Look to your sins you filthy degenerates the apprentice exclaimed. Death comes for you all. Before any of us could do anything, the apprentice detonated some sort of alchemical components which she had hidden under her robes, causing a bright blue burst of fire. All of us were thrown back and took a fair amount of damage. The mage faculty and university guards worked tirelessly to fight the flames, clear the debris, and rescue students from the inferno in the library. In the end, over a dozen students were killed, and many more were injured, and taken to the clerics for healing. Over the course of a week or so, we had begun investigating the incident. Turns out that a magic cult had begun gaining influence in the region. They then worked tirelessly to radicalize and turn some of the students at the university over to their beliefs. Over the course of the time, more and more attacks were happening, and an air of fear overtook the entire school, sending it practically into martial law. We took it upon ourselves to stop the cult. Bram was exceptionally enthusiastic about killing them. He had just gotten to the school, and now they threatened to end his studies. We heard about a certain meeting from a few students who we suspected of being involved with this cult, and feigned interest in it ourselves. Basically, the cult was feeding off the students' dissatisfaction with the arcane university, and was offering them knowledge and power that the school could not. An idea like this was exceptionally satisfying to most wizards and sorcerers we knew. We went to the meeting and found out some valuable information about our enemies. Even better, they revealed where the cult's hidden lair was. Upon finding out this information, we knew what we had to do to save our school. But Bram was angrier than the rest of the group, and decided to act. While the group was listening to the high-ranking cultist, Bram moved around, ever so slowly and carefully and used his second to none sleight of hand ability to place a large portion of alchemist's fire at a very strategic location. Bram then started doing the hand motions for the spell fireball, and before any of the PCS or cultists could stop him, the small fuse he had placed at the alchemist's fire had gone off. And he motioned his hands at exactly the right time. To all others it looked as though he had cast the spell fireball. When the smoke had cleared, Three of the cultists were dead, and the high-ranking cultist was on fire. Bram immediately took charge in the chaos, and directed his compatriots, and all of the wizards from the university who had come. They were all too eager, because many of the cultists were furious and were looking for the saboteur by massacring every wizard they could get their hands on with sword and spell. Bram and the others all fought their way through the building and ran to the city guards, who were desperately trying to stop the fire. The cultists came out in a blood frenzy, were quickly slain by the guards, and they assumed that the fire had been started by them, which saved all of us from questioning. Bram gathered the rebellious wizards and sorcerers in a group, and through a very good diplomacy check, began to give a speech on how lucky they were to have the gift of magic. How lucky they all were to be in the best magic university in the world, and of course how they shouldn't throw away all their potential and gifts on the words of madmen. After my inspiring speech, we all returned to the university. A week later, Bram and his new friends were all ready to assault the lair of the cult. 
Bram stocked up heavily on his magic items, alchemist fire, lightning javelins, sunroads, smoker sticks, thunderstones, and everything similar. We had made a good way through the lair of the cult, slaying cultist after cultist, figuring that we should completely uproot them, else they might reform some time later. Bram casted more than a few fireballs and lightning bolts in that particular dungeon. I used every trick at my disposal, and my group was still none the wiser. Of course I didn't use too much magic, because Bram relied mostly on his swordsmanship, and only casted his magic if the need came up. Or if he felt like he needed to reinforce it to himself and his friends. Bram loved the feeling of being a wizard, even if he really wasn't one. He just loved the idea of others thinking he was one, and being able to use his tricks. He even partially convinced himself that what he was doing was a form of magic. Eventually we came to what looked like the entrance to the cult leader's retreat. Bram put on his cloak of invisibility, using a sleight of hand to convince everyone he cast invisibility on himself. Bram stealthfully examined the cultist's defenses. He was not excited by what he saw. Dozens of cultists, all armed and ready, augmented by summoned creatures, golems, and even a young enthralled silver dragon. Thinking, Bram decided to use his greatest strength. Deceit. Bram had been the only one to take skills like bluff, and so he knew that he was the only one who could fake this. Bram went over to one of the dead cultists, and removed his robes. The cultist robes were about as stereotypical as you could get. Blood red, with a hood, and going all the way down to your ankles. Bram draped the robes over himself and went to distract the defenders, while the others were huddled together under a globe of invisibility. Bram, with his cloak of invisibility close on hand, waddled over to the cultists. Immediately two of them came right up to him. Take off your hood acolyte, one of the cultists said to me. Bram had unknowingly grabbed merely an acolyte's robes apparently. This put a damper on his plans, but he figured that he could bullshit his way out of this. Bram removed his hood and smiled innocently to the cultists, who were extremely unamused. I don't recognize you acolyte, one said suspiciously. Oh I'm really new, my name's Bram. I hid under one of the tables when the non-believers started cutting their way through us. You're new? What brought you to us the cultist asked, with his guard down a bit. Oh I've been all over the place, Bram said. He checked over his shoulder, and noticed the slightest of shimmers move past one of the brazers near to the door. His compatriots had almost reached the inner sanctum. Bram just needed to distract the guards a bit more. I did many things before I came here, Bram continued, just loud enough for everyone in the massive room to hear. Gladiator, Bouncer, Gigolo, Slave, plus a few odd jobs. Gigolo the cultist asked, I out of game laughed to myself at how similar this situation I found myself in was to another famous DD character. Deciding that he had no fucks to give, Bram decided to tell both the cultists and my fellow players his actual backstory. Yeah, I was a slave for almost all of my childhood, worked as a gladiator till I was 14, got really good at killing people in there. I made some noble lady really hot and bothered so she bought me as her bed slave. Did that for about half a year. The cultists laughed, and the others had taken a bit of interest in my backstory and were paying more attention to me. What made you stop that life one in the crowd asked. Bram laughed back, her husband found out. First time I ever had to kill a noble he responded, the room broke out in laughter at that. Out of game, the others were being blocked by a pair of clay golems, who refused to move away from the door. They all needed a major distraction, and I knew just what to give them. With a successful sleight of hand trick, I put on my cloak of invisibility. Thoroughly confused at how I did this, the cultists were all a bit stunned, and that's when I did something amazing. You see, many of my tricks either involve, or must be held within a bag of holding. I just so happened to have a rather large one on me that I had filled entirely with lantern oil. I had intended on using it if I had to blow up any walls, but I figured that this would be good enough. With the cultists distracted for a second, I set the unassuming bag on the ground with a lit fuse sticking out of it like the candle on a birthday cake. Kaboom. A split second after I had exited the blast radius, the bag went off. Now, not only did the thing burn, but the bag held a maximum of 500 pounds of material. 500 pounds of lantern oil, going off in a confined space would also create a massive explosion. The cultist directly in front of me was instantly incinerated. Six others were either dead or severely wounded, and the others were partially deafened, and extremely disoriented. 
This gave enough of a distraction for me and my group to slip by the door and run down the hallway into the laboratory of the big bad evil guy cult leader. The second we entered, he started monologuing at us, calling us pathetic excuses for mages and all other things that only villains would say. We were just about to initiate a fight with him when a miasma started to envelope us. The other characters started coughing and collapsing to the ground, all except for Bram, who remained unaffected. The villain started laughing. The gas was an alchemical substance which when inhaled rendered wizard's abilities temporarily useless. While Bram's friends were helpless on the ground, he simply walked forward, completely unaffected. The party and the villain all looked at him stunned. You. That's impossible the villain wind. No one hurts my friends, or my school, Bram said in a low menacing voice. Before the villain could even get a word in, I was on him like a Canadian on maple syrup. Surprisingly, the cult leader was strangely weak. Apparently most of the difficulty from fighting him was supposed to come from our characters being unable to cast spells. It was a tough fight for me single-handedly, but I did manage to kill him with 10 hit points remaining. After leaving him dead on an altar, and escaping through his private escape route, the others immediately demanded an explanation. Apparently and I honestly thought you knew didn't suffice. With a heavy sigh, Bram revealed to them that he hadn't even a tiny bit of magical talent. Everything they had seen him do was a trick designed to make people think that he had talent. Bram told them that when he was a slave, all he ever wanted in life was to become a wizard, because surely someone with so much power must have a better life than he did. Even when he never showed any signs of magical talent, he told them that he still hoped, and still studied whatever he could, because he simply wanted to be nearer to it. Even wearing magical armor and trinkets and wielding magical weapons and items made him feel closer to being a mage. The only reason he never told them was because he didn't want to be kicked out of the college, because attending it was his dream. Bram even admitted to them that them just thinking he was magically gifted felt amazing to him. Out of game, the others in the pot broke down into hysterical laughter. They simply could not believe that I had tricked them this whole time into thinking that I was a full eldritch knight. To them me doing this was absolutely amazing, they all forgave me and promised to keep my secret in game. And that was the first major tale of Bran the Honorary Wizard, he has several more tales to tell, which I may get to later down the line. I hope you enjoyed him, I certainly did, if there's some interest in the guy I'll post the rest of his adventures. Sorry this first post was so long. You know, I'm sure you guys have noticed it by now, but I don't, I'm just really drawn towards like really unusual character builds and designs. I don't know what it is, but there's something about them, and like, you know, look how many videos have I done about weird or unusual character designs at this point. You know, it's getting a bit, wee bit fucking out of hand. You know what I mean? I like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, give me that, give me that. You know, and that's, I don't know why I'm really drawn to that. But no, um, so like, I, like, you know, there's a few parts to this story. Um, like, you know, try and get it hammered out as soon as I can. Um, handful, so like, you know, I would really recommend, like, you know, subscribing and clicking that notification bell to step to speed if you want to hear what's going to happen next with Bram. Um, I would definitely recommend it, but like, you know, like, anyway, If you haven't guys, already checked out my Redbubble portfolio, you, you might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?